A very good day, students, parents, ladies, and gentlemen. Let me first warmly welcome all of you to Singapore Institute of Technology's virtual open house. In this video, I'll be sharing on the Singapore's energy story and the unsung heroes that make this story a success. With a history spanning more than a century, electricity has, without a doubt, played a pivotal role in shaping the transformation of Singapore into a modern, industrialized nation. Over the last 50 years, Singapore has developed into an independent and prosperous nation. We started as a small island with very few resources. Through sheer hard work and determination of our people, we created a modern city-state that we live today. Behind the scene, energy has played a crucial role in our growth. More than just keeping the lights on, we now enjoy one of the world's most reliable electricity supplies, enabling a quality standard of living for all. But before electricity came, lighting at night was provided by gas lamps. The first investment in electricity generation in Singapore was made in 1878 by private investors, the Tanjung Paga Dock Company. The company invested in electricity generation to drive the engines of generators installed at the Tanjung Paga Dock and to extend the working hours there. Eventually, the company became a government agency and in 1906, the first opening of Mackenzie's Road Power Station marked the official turning on of electricity in Singapore. But unfortunately, it was demolished after the Japanese occupation. Probably most of you would have noticed the St. James Power Station near Harbourfront area. Built in 1926, it was Singapore's second power station which supplied electricity to nearby port and the surrounding industries, shipyards and residents. In 1940, it became the first power station to use fuel oil for electricity generation in replacement of dirty coal. Later, it became a major music theme live venue and recently it was announced that it will be the global headquarters for Dyson. Since then, we have come a long way to upgrade and improve our electricity system with more than 13 gigawatts of generation capacity and with more than 95% of Singapore's electricity produced from cleaner natural gas. The Energy Market Authority of Singapore is always committed to continuously maintain Singapore's high standards for delivery of electricity to consumers. By 2005, Singapore has two standing agreements with Indonesia for the supply of pipeline gas. The first for gas from offshore fields in the Natuna Sea via a 650km subsea pipeline and the second for supplies from the Gurisic plant in South Sumatra to Singapore via Batam through a 460km pipeline. Singapore also established a gas pipeline from Malaysia and today about 72% of Singapore's natural gas requirement for electricity generation comes from these pipelines, ensuring enough supply to power up our generators. The power lines that connect the power plants to consumers is a network of cables of 27,000 kilometers long, more than the distance from Singapore to San Francisco and back. SP Group undertook the construction of transmission cable tunnel system in 2013. While regular cables are buried 3 meters underground, the underground transmission cable tunnel system is much deeper at 60 meters below the surface. This is equivalent to the height of a 20-story building. Eventually, the tunnels will be unmanned, washed over by a network of sensors and just robots which can detect hazards such as fires and water leaks. The tunnel system makes it easier for engineers to assess these cables, eliminating the need to dig up and cover the streets to do cable repair or replacement. The effects of climate change are irreversible on the time scales of people alive today and will worsen in the decades to come. Global climate change has already had observable effects on the environment with global temperature rise, acceleration of sea level rise, and increase in amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. For the power and energy sector to evolve to meet climate change condition, it is embracing digital technologies, automation, and bi-directionality, mainly driven by increased competition, customer demand to decarbonize, introduction of electric vehicles, and promotion of clean energy technologies. With the power and energy sector being the top contributor for carbon emission, various policies and strategies have been set out to ensure Singapore meets its emission targets through concrete action across all sectors to facilitate a low carbon transition, building on its long-standing emphasis on sustainable development. In the power and energy sector, the next chapter of our energy story will harness four switches to guide us and transform our energy supply, focusing on one, natural gas generation, 2. Solar energy, 3. Regional power grids, and 4. Emerging low-carbon alternatives. For the natural gas generation switch, 
We will focus on new ways to improve natural gas generation efficiency and diversify the import, storage and conversion of natural gas. For solar energy switch, we aim to increase our solar deployment to 1.5 gigawatt by 2025 and at least 2 gigawatt by 2030 by increasing installation on building rooftops, reservoirs and offshore spaces. For the switch on regional power grid, we will facilitate greater interconnectivity between countries in the region and therefore allow us to assess energy resources that would otherwise be unavailable or limited in Singapore. Singapore will also explore the fourth switch on emerging low carbon alternative such as hydrogen and carbon capture, utilization and storage, which can potentially help us further reduce our carbon emission in the longer term. In order to achieve what we have done till today, we relied upon powerful men and women who gave their unwavering commitment towards growing our country's electricity sector and ultimately keeping the lights on for Singapore. These men and women are truly Singapore's unsung heroes. These superheroes have played major roles in different sections of the larger electricity system, be it in the generation, transmission, distribution or consumer side. Some ensured that power plant operated 24-7 reliably, meeting the power demands of the people. Some ensured the power transmission cables were regularly inspected and maintained. Some were designing and installing the electrical power network of our MRT and LRT lines. Some were involved in electricity network operation and management of industrial and commercial facilities. And some were involved in research and development work to develop solutions that allow for improved energy efficiency and alternative energy sources. They are all for me like the E-Man superhero character in the early 1970s where he became an energy being that could take any form of matter. It is not an easy task of ensuring everyone have hot water in the morning to bathe, powers to their mobile phones and electricity to power the MRT that they take to school or work. But it is truly a purposeful and meaningful work. Our energy story is a long term effort. We need concentrated effort from everyone from businesses to research communities, youths and union and the general public to achieve this vision of cleaner and more efficient energy future. More importantly, with many of our superheroes aging and to achieve what we aspire to do in the next chapter of our energy story, we need more heroes with superpowers to join the electricity sector. We invite all of the students out there to be part of this change to make the earth a better place while ensuring everyone have the standard quality of life. To be a hero in the Singapore's energy story, the first step is to join the Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Power Engineering at SIT. Let me give you the top five reasons to join the BNG in Electrical Power Engineering program, if in short. The first reason, the degree is awarded by two universities, SIT and Newcastle University. SIT was established in 2009 and gazetted as an autonomous university in 2014. SIT currently has six distributed campuses with its main campus in SIT at Dover. As of 2020, we offer 46 programs with an enrollment size of more than 7,000 students. SIT is a university of applied learning. We offer industry-focused degree programs integrating learning, industry and community targeted at growth industry, in our case, the electricity sector. We partner with Newcastle University, one of the largest power groups in the UK with over 140 years of experience, to help prepare our students for a career at the forefront of electrical power engineering, including roles in transport electrification and renewable energy. Newcastle University houses the UK's National Centre for Energy System Conversion and UK's Advanced Propulsion Centre. They bring with them extensive industrial experience in smart grid, renewable energy, power systems and electrical machines and drive. The second reason is that the program offers honours degree in the electrical engineering domain with specialisation in two power engineering tracks, namely power and energy and transportation electrification. The power and energy track is directly related to solar and regional power grid switches in the Singapore energy story to support increased penetration of solar energy at land, rooftop and offshore platforms as well as to tap on import of electricity from other regional power networks. This track includes modules on sustainable generation and renewable energy, smart grids and electricity markets and core power engineering modules on power system operation and protection and electrical installation design for built environment. Industry electives in power and energy track aims to prepare students to be professional engineers, chartered engineers, certified energy managers 
and licensed electrical engineers. More recently, electric vehicles are making huge inroads in the automotive industry with various policies introduced to increase adoption of electric vehicles. Singapore even aims to phase out internal combustion engine vehicles and have all vehicles run on cleaner energy by 2040. The track on transportation electrification is aimed to equip our students with the knowledge on electrical network and the requirement of the power grid to support transport electrification. The track includes modules on energy storage and application, electric propulsion system, transportation power supply, and electric vehicle and charging infrastructure. These industry electives are aimed to prepare students for electrical rail and road transportation, electric marine propulsion, and aerospace electrification. The third reason is that the future SIT campus will be part of the Pungul Digital District that will feature a fit-for-purpose campus where the reimagining of higher education can take place within a community setting together with businesses at JTC building and residential consumers at the HDB blocks. SIT worked with Singapore Power to build the Pungul Campus microgrid as a microsome of the future grid, which is highly decentralized, digitalized and with two-way power flows. Sunset will also partner SIT to explore solar energy technologies and energy intelligence. This will provide opportunities for applied learning in an authentic environment for many of the new capabilities needed. For example, in high voltage DC, bi-directional capabilities, application of modeling and simulation, and artificial intelligence to power system. Furthermore, co-location with industry will also facilitate joint experimentation and co-creation of education programs that are highly relevant to the industry needs. The fourth reason is that the last 12 months of the program is spent on integrated internship and industry-inspired capstone project. Typically, a student will spend the first four trimesters undertaking core modules in electrical and electronic engineering, followed by industry electives in the two tracks, power and energy and the transportation electrification track. The student has the flexibility to choose the preferred industry elective from any of the tracks. Subsequently, the student will undergo integrated work-study internship from the start of year 2 trimester 3 till the end of year 3 trimester 1. This is followed by the last trimester of the program with two industry elective and an industry-inspired capstone project which is usually conceived to solve a problem statement faced during internship. We understand that engineers by their training are analytical professionals. On job in the industry, they require a variety of core skills from complex problem solving, troubleshooting to due diligence and communication. The program is also structured to provide well-rounded education with strong grounding in critical thinking, communication skills, design innovation skills, interdisciplinary project management with social context and digital transformation. The highly robust and versatile curriculum aims to prepare students for lifelong learning in a fast-changing world. The last reason is that the degree program is two years, eight months long, ending in April or May. This means that our students will graduate at the same time with the peers from other Singapore universities and thus enter the job market with the last 12 months of their degree program practically already working in the industry. This gives them an added advantage and many of our graduates secure work at their internship company even before graduation. We have come to the end of the presentation. In summary, the recent developments in the Singapore's power and energy and transportation electrification sector are pointing towards a shortage of skilled professionals in the industry. The demand for electrical engineers has historically seen a steady increase, but it is set to rise further in the near future. We hope to welcome you into our EPE family at SIT and provide you with the knowledge and skills to play a hero's role in powering people's life. Thank you.